Hello, I am Yogi Nisunita and this is Meditation, Yoga and Stuff podcast. I believe my dharma or my life's purpose is to share my understanding of meditation, yoga and Ayurveda, holistic healing science of India. I make these amazing wisdoms accessible and adaptable for present times. So let's start. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today's topic is emotional intelligence in yoga and Ayurveda. Today I am exploring how emotional intelligence uh, is innate part of wisdom of yoga and Ayurveda. The ancient uh, sages may have not used the word emotional intelligence, but it is really integral ability or integral part of wisdom of yoga and Ayurveda. So what is emotional intelligence? So it is the ability to understand, recognize and manage our emotions efficiently. Even though wisdom of yoga is a path of enlightenment and Ayurveda is also a path of enlightenment and also well-being, both these wisdoms is basically we reach to this goal by working on ourselves. So we tune into self-care, we tune into what's really happening with our whole being. And part of that is really becoming aware of our emotions. Part of that is is also connecting with what's happening with our mental health, physical health and overall well-being. And when we understand that, we actually start understanding our emotional intelligence as well we start becoming self-aware. And so when we be start becoming self-aware, we start also noticing the stories we carry. A lot of time, we don't even know that we react to certain situation in certain way. But when we start observing ourselves, we start noticing uh, the patterns uh, which are... Uh, our emotional patterns, we start noticing that we are looking at the world through these filters. These filters are called sanskaras in wisdom of yoga. So let me explain sanskaras a little bit more. Sanskaras is a Sanskrit word. And what it means is when we are grasping information, our brain actually has to make sense of all the information. Even though we may notice 100% of what's happening, we retain roughly 10 to 15% of information to make sense of it. And to make sense of it, our brain has to go back to the memory of our experiences to make sense of this experience. And that's how roughly a layperson's point of view, how human brain works. So we are looking at this world through these layers of sanskaras, through these colorings of sanskaras. So we are making sense of all our experiences through these uh, veils, we can call it. And this is called a sans, uh, this is called sanskaras in wisdom of yoga. And every individual is a unique fingerprint of divine according to yoga and Ayurveda as well. So when we are making sense of these uh, experiences, we also start thinking that that's who we are. And this is where sometimes conflicts may come up with other people because they are looking at the world from their point of view. We are looking at the world from our point of view. And then sometimes we start thinking that they are wrong, I am right. Things like that can happen. So this is where when we start bringing stillness, we start tuning into our self, we become mindful of our sanskaras. We start noticing our reactions without, uh, sometimes uh, these reactions are so fast that we don't even know that they're happening. But when we start observing these reactions with conscious awareness through meditation and without any judgment, we actually can let go of these emotional patterns. And this is where wisdom of yoga as well as Ayurveda agrees that meditation is a very powerful tool to help us 
bring balance back into our system really become self aware from ayurvedic point of view ayurveda look at it from the uh, the concept of doshas doshas ayurveda is a healing science of india and in ayurveda there are three doshas or three constitutions vata pitta kapha and what vata means is basically a constitution where the mind is fast the speech is fast the skin is dry this is vata person in a very short short intro and vata's mind is always busy they have thin lanky body uh, they can be really short or tall they can also space out really quickly really fast uh, thought process but a lot of ideas but not necessarily complete those ideas there is a second type which is pitta pitta is a fiery personality these are the go getters doers these are the natural born leaders but excess pitta can be extremely jealousy too much fire too much ambition this can be their downfall and then kapha person is basically slow in the movement so so kapha's uh, tendency is earth and water together which become uh, together it becomes like a mud so slow movement slow is sluggish kind of like personality and uh, kapha's downfall is that it takes them to absorb the information once they absorb, absorb it they retain it so they they are really good for administrative work and they are really amazing in a maintaining wealth and it, it takes them time to grasp the information but once they get it they really hold on to it they really get it so it's really positive thing about them so these are the vata pitta kapha personalities once we understand our own constitution because sometimes we have combination of these we may have one dosha or maybe two dosha dominant or maybe three dosha dominant so depending on what's happening with us when we understand our our constitution ayurvedic constitution we understand our emotional patterns better we understand our food need we basically become self aware on all levels of our being uh, for example a vata can be as i said very fast moving so lots of ideas but uh, making that happen doesn't happen and then vata person start beating themselves up maybe i'm not good good at anything and so here but vata person's uh, beauty is they're very creative so taking that understanding and then bringing your balance in your life for example you may be you are really good at creating then focus on creativity and bring more creativity in your life because you will thrive in that so that's the vata personality pitta personality are the doers they need to keep doing the projects the activity they are natural leaders if if they are pushed into almost like uh, not taking that leadership role and also not doing actively anything or learning actively anything then they feel that they are not thriving in their life so pitta person need to bring that awareness in their life that i need to take charge of a project or i need to lead the project and that will help me thrive this uh, go getter kind of like personality which is pitta uh, they will thrive in that and the kapha person is maybe more happy with the administrative job because kapha once they understand the rules they will be really really focus on making those steps fulfill so they are really good at administrative kind of like job so when when they understand that they love routine and and have this regularity in their life kapha will thrive there now kapha should also challenge bringing in more irregularity once in a while but this will really help them to understand that you know these kind of jobs they will thrive there this kind of work they will thrive there so once we start understanding our self that self awareness that what is our dosha what's happening with us physically 
it really helps us to bring balance into our life and let go of imbalances. So we are moving towards restoring emotional equilibrium. And then with the physical awareness, with the wisdom of yoga, when we start noticing that through the yogic movements or asana practices, that when we combine the movement and mindfulness together, the asana practice thrives. We start tuning into maybe I'm holding tension in here in my shoulder or maybe in my leg or maybe in my hips or we start noticing these things and this will help us to let go of that. So we take that understanding which we gain on the mat, uh, yoga mat, and then we bring that into our life. So this is where wisdom of yoga is really, really helpful to understand ourselves better and that that way we can move with the self-awareness will help us to bring in more emotional balance. Another thing wisdom of yoga and Ayurveda really promotes or encourages is mind-body connection. So that deep connection between mind and body, we in this modern world, we are constantly looking outwards. We are looking at screens, we are looking at experiences outside of us. But when we start turning awareness inwards through meditation, through the asana practices where we are really connecting with our breath, connecting with our mind, noticing what's happening in our body, all this helps us to maybe reinvent that mind-body connection. We start noticing that our mind and our body are very much connected. And when we release our body of tension and stress, we are becoming emotionally free as well. So it really goes hand in hand. You know, both mind and body are very much connected. And we experience this world through our body. We have to tune into this body to see if there is any unnecessary holding of any muscles is happening where we are storing the information because our body tells the story of our emotions, our mental, physical, emotional state. And so it is, a, it is not just stand alone on its own. It is all connected. So when we start working with our body with conscious awareness and really try and understand ourself through wisdom of yoga, meditation, Ayurveda, we let go of a lot of emotional baggage. And this is uh, in, on this path, we become more self-aware and more resilient emotionally. Then also we learn to regulate our emotions. In Wisdom of Yoga, there are many, many practices which will help us to regulate our emotions. They can be the physical movement relaxation practices they can be pranayam uh, because our mind and our breath is very much connected. So a yogic breathing practices are really powerful tool to work with the mind. And the meditation practices, there are also practices called pratyahara, which are relaxation practices. They also help us to release a lot of tension in our system and as a side outcome of that is or side effect of that is is we cultivate calmness we reduce stress we promote em emotional resilience and all this impacts our emotional wellness through wisdom of yoga we also cultivate a compassion and empathy because once we start noticing what's happening within us, we also start sensing other people's uh, emotions and the stories they carry. We become more empathetic, we become more caring, not just with ourselves, but with others as well. Our relationships improve. So when we start noticing and connecting with ourselves, it really helps to our people around us as well. It not just helps us, but also helps all the people around us. It builds a lot of strong connection. Uh, we also learn to communicate better. We create more meaningful connections. One of the basic principle or a guideline of wisdom of yoga is ahinsa or non-violence. And ahinsa is uh, such a beautiful word. 
in fact if we just follow this word the first word of wisdom of yoga ahinsa where if we bring in the non violence in our thought non violence in our speech non violence in our movements non violence in our communication we are basically becoming aware really aware of our self really taking care of ourselves as well as we are looking after others as well there is deep compassion behind any non violence now let's let me give example what i mean so when you are really tuning into the principle of ahinsa start noticing your thoughts notice if your thoughts are uh maybe authoritative or maybe maybe negative self talk once we become aware of these things you know we start then changing that we can slowly and steadily start noticing that this tone we have sometimes in our mind it needs to be changed if the tone is very authoritative for example if the tone is very authoritative we need to gently and slowly start changing that into more caring and compassionate and that is ahinsa here if the tone is very angry we need to gently start changing it into compassionate and positive so if the tone is negative again we have to practice the positiveness and it is not just oh think positive think positive but it is more deeper process so when we start meditating these changes start happening very slowly so first thing is we need to be very compassionate and caring towards ourselves and once we start doing that we start noticing that our communication also changes we become more aware more caring with others as well we start noticing others pain and so we can bring in more compassion there while communicating with them and this ahinsa is a very powerful powerful guideline just staying with this guideline can help us to move towards really amazing emotional intelligence physical and emotional detox ayurveda is really big on detox in a sense like daily rituals so in ayurveda the regular practices of getting rid of ama which is a toxic morbid best of our digestive system is very important and so for that ayurveda has something called pancha karma that means five cleansing techniques combined together to help you get rid of ama which is a toxic morbid west of our system this understanding of ayurveda of getting rid of that physical ama it, it also impacts our emotional ama so what it wo- does is these five techniques bring all the ama into our gastric tract again and then helps to release that but with that also we are releasing a lot of whatever is not serving us so it's never just physical experience and so this kind of like emotional detoxification and physical uh, detoxification helps us to feel lighter more rejuvenated and more alive in a way and so ayurveda has these practices which helps us to let go yoga teaches us to let go through meditation through uh different practices as well so in uh, in also in wisdom of yoga we start noticing the regulation uh, regulating our breath we start noticing that if we are tense we breathe really shallow so that awareness then we slowly steadily start deepening our breath that oxygenate our system that oxygenation of our system helps us to uh start feeling in more energy in our system that helps us to start feeling more alive more active and that helps us emotional uh emotionally better mentally better physically better now emotional resilience and adaptability is also one of the things which we learn from yoga and ayurveda because in yoga it is not just the flexibility of the body but also mind as well 
so mind needs to be flexible as well and so tuning into that that adapting to the new situations understanding what's happening in the life also accepting that the change is a big part of our life all this understanding comes through wisdom of yoga and ayurveda when we start practicing these uh, beautiful wisdoms and then mindful communication is one more thing uh, i want to mention that when we become aware of our own emotions and we become aware of ahinsa we really become mindful of what we are saying we become mindful of communicating with care and with compassion and so this really helps us to find that balance bringing in more awareness into each and every aspect of our life emotional intelligence becomes really big part of our yogic and ayurvedic life because when we start our day with a very positive note and keep that kind of like positive energy helps us to cultivate emotional intelligence and throughout the day we are constantly checking in checking our breath checking our body's re- our mind's reaction checking what's happening in our body are we holding any tension and on top of that if you have regular practices that will really help uh, help you to let go of these unnecessary habits which are not serving you so a lot of this uh, self inquiry and self awareness really helps us to become emotionally really intelligence we become really amazing communicator as well and this communication skill is with really conscious awareness and we learn to create harmony and balance in our existence not just with ourselves but with our surroundings with our loved ones with our acquaintances so this helps us to find that physical mental emotional spiritual balance and this is a beauty of wisdom of yoga and ayurveda if you have any questions about the topic or if you want to learn more about yoga and ayurveda feel free to book a mentoring session with me i'm happy to help you to give you self your self care practices designed for your individual need what it does it it really helps you to flourish and thrive in your life because these are practices which are really designed for your energy system your physical system your emotional system your mental system i can help you with that so feel free to communicate with me through my website you can send me email through my website then let's take it from there you can also become part of my community i have the wellness tribe where this is how we explore there are other healers as well so you can be part of that and i'm sure you will really enjoy our wellness tribe Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate that that you're taking this time out of your day. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye for now.